Hi, this is Danielle Galvan Gomez, and today I'm going to teach you how to make your own dye from all natural, non toxic ingredients. So many products that we consume are dyed through industrial means. This you can see on the screen, this is what industrial dyeing looks like. All your clothes, even some of the food that you eat, like something like Doritos or Gatorade, has dyes that are not necessarily natural in them. But dyeing or adding pigment to fabric or paper is an ancient process. It's something that's been around for most of human history and even contemporary artists are working with dye. In fact, local artist Carmen Argote uses dye from natural fruits and vegetables that she gathers. Listen to her talk about her process in her most recent piece, Me at Market. So my name is Carmen Argote and this is Me at Market. I started thinking about gravity as my main material with this work, um, the material that really dictates these marks, you know, that really abstracts everything. That way of thinking pointed me to materials that I that I have used in the past. I don't always use, but um, materials that have, that are charged with um, what I think of as like a, a really transformative element. And one of those materials is cochineal. And so cochineal, you know, reacts to pH um, and uh, changes color depending on whether something is more alkaline and acidic. And I thought, well, cochineal is an interesting material here to use, both because it already has such a charge, both historically, but also like materially. Um, it's, it's so sensitive. And so I, I started envisioning covering this paper surface with cochineal and having um, an acid react to it. This idea of like alchemy, um, that these like proteins or these these, these, these materials will, will change with, with lemon, um, which is what I'm using for my acid base. My process just requires some time. Um, I would say like the minimum is like, you know, like two weeks, three weeks to really kind of get to know it. So, the, so, so that it's not just like that initial sort of um, impact so that I can kind of get to know it in its more complex ways, or I can kind of begin questioning or building the conversation and that that then brings, you know, uh, the the form and the materials and everything forward. Everything from cutting the fabric, planning it, sewing, um, making the pattern, hand sewing the pockets onto it. So there's already so much labor and care and time and uh, energy poured into the piece that that already, you know, to, to be able to kind of push that further. I mean, that's, that's, that's felt. You heard Carmen Argote describe her work as a kind of alchemy. Alchemy is medieval chemical science whose aims were to transmutate or transform base metals into gold and other precious substances. It is often considered a mix of both magic and science. As we begin our own project with dyeing, think about how it is a seemingly magical process of transformation, creation, and combination, and experimentation. Keep this in mind as we begin our project, and as you continue to think of new ways to apply what I teach you in your own art practice and in your own artwork. Let's begin. For this project, you're gonna need containers to store your dye, a pot and pan as well as alum and fruits and vegetables and baking soda. So everything we're making is non-toxic but it's good practice to have separate pots and pans for things that you use to make art materials from so that's why I'm labeling this one. Start by getting your red cabbage and peeling the first layer off then go ahead and cut it in half. Look how beautiful it is. <laughs> it has such beautiful lines and line work and then go ahead and chop up the rest of it. You're going to want to get fruits and vegetables that are really pigmented like this because you're going to extract the most color from, from these fruits and vegetables. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in my pot, all the cut up pieces. Then I'm going to add hot water until all the cut pieces are submerged. Then leave to boil for at least 30 minutes. You can already see some of the pigment 
coming out in the water if you look with your spoon. I couldn't get fresh turmeric from the store, so I'm using this turmeric root um, instead. And it's going to be kind of like making tea. So I'm going to go ahead and put the turmeric root into my pot. Turmeric is a um, really beautiful orange, almost saffron colored um, root vegetable. And it kind of looks like ginger when you first get it. And so I'm going to add the water and it's going to start boiling. I'm going to only leave it for a few minutes. Um, and then when it's done boiling, I'm going to go ahead and drain it into one of my uh, mason jars and leave it to cool in the fridge. Repeat this exact same process with some blackberries that I got. I'm going to crush them a little bit while um, they're boiling. Also, don't forget to periodically stir your um, boiling fruits and vegetables. So you can see there's even more dye coming out now. And they look about done. It's been 30 minutes. My timer went off, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off the heat. And you can already see that a lot of the cabbage actually has the color drain for it. It's not as vibrant as it was earlier. Um, so I'm going to get a strainer and strain it just like I did the other vegetables. Careful, because this is going to be hot. You can also leave it to cool before you do this if that's easier for you. It's also great is that this way of making paint is sustainable because now I'm going to eat this cabbage and have it for dinner later. And once it's fully strained, you can see how beautiful, what a pur beautiful purple this dye is. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you just initially what it looks like with a tissue test. That's the initial color we get. We're gonna play around with this a little bit later in this video, but yeah, once you're done, you can go ahead and put this in the fridge to cool. For your other fruits and vegetables, go ahead and repeat the same process. Chop them up, put them into your pot to boil, and um, drain and strain them. I also do this with blueberries and with avocado pits and shells. With the berries, I did the extra step of straining them with um, something that you use to make tea with because it's really fine and it could get rid of all the pulp that comes with when you do this with berries. The other ones don't really make a pulp in the same way. Uh, you want your dye to be as smooth as possible. Once you've done this, put them all into containers, either Tupperware or mason jars or something that you have on hand and go ahead and put them in the fridge and leave them to cool for at least an hour and even overnight. So now that our dyes have cooled, um, you can look at them and see the different colors that we have. Both of these, believe it or not, are from the red cabbage. They're from the same um, batch of red cabbage that we made that we have this blue and we have this purple. So now we're going to do what we call adding a mordant. So we have alum. And a mordant is something that you add to dye. It's an, kind of acid. And it helps to create solubility and greater color fast. So you get a better color. But you see when you add, <laughs> when you add the mordant, because it's a salt, it's changing the pH. You heard Carmen Argote talk about pH. It's changing the electron distribution and density of the dye. So the color of the dye fabric also tends to change when you add your mordant. So I'm going to dye this white Adrian Piper shirt. She's a, another artist um, that I got from the Hammer Museum. I'm going to dye it with my red cabbage dye. So I've added the alum to the red cabbage dye. I added it... Um, uh, I'm doing something called co-mordating, which is when you dye and mordant simultaneously. You can add your mordant at different um, times of dyeing. You can add it when you're boiling the water. You can dye first and then treat your fabric or your paper with a mordant after. And play around with that and see how the acidic nature of um, the mordant absorbs and changes the color of your piece. So I'm going to go ahead and add my shirt, make sure it's soaked. You can already see it picking up some of the color because that red cabbage just gives, it has so much pigment in it from, from just us boiling it for 30 or 40 minutes. So I'm going to make sure that every single part is wet because if it doesn't get wet, that part isn't going to be dyed. And after we leave it to sit, we're going to make sure that we continue to to move it to make sure that, see how that's white right there because that part hasn't gotten, hasn't been kneaded enough. 
So once the fabric has been thoroughly submerged and every part of it has dye on it, I'm going to go ahead and put it to the side and leave it for at least an hour. You can leave it overnight, you can leave it for longer, but the longer you soak it, the more dye it will absorb, the more color it will have. Along with a mordant, which helps it to remain color fast, like alum, which is what you, we've been using, and you can find alum in a normal grocery store, you're also going to want a fixative. In this case, baking soda. So I'm mixing baking soda into our red cabbage dye. These are both the same, except one is mixed with alum and one is mixed with baking soda. And what the baking soda is gonna do is um, help to set the dye so that when you use it to dye something, it doesn't lose its color quickly, but you'll also see it alters the color. So this is what the alum looks like. Compare that to when it's mixed with just baking soda. It's a blue, it's completely, this is from the same batch of red cabbage, and yet just mixing a fixative and a mordant have completely changed the outcome of our ink. We kind of have this beautiful pale blue. This is the dyed when it's just straight from boiling, how it comes out. It doesn't have any mordants or fixatives in it. It's just the, the um, essentially the red cabbage juice. And you can see it's kind of pale. It doesn't have as much pigment as the other colors. It's not as vibrant. Um, it's a little bit more watery. But it's still, it's still um, rather lovely. The reason that we're adding these extra elements is that so that we can keep that color longer and so that it will be brighter. So it's really important that we kind of play around. This is the three different colors. The baking soda will dry to kind of a greenish hue. I'm going to add baking soda to the alum mixture. This is if you mix them together, baking soda and alum. I just wanted to see what that's like. You could see how it's getting really big as I spin and spin and spin. That's because it's oxidizing. It's adding air into the water. Everything that we're using is a chemical, whether or not we think of chemicals as bad things, but water is a chemical. Its chemical compound is H2O. Air has chemicals in it, like nitrogen. And so anytime a chemical compound reacts to another chemical or another chemical compound, there's going to be a reaction, which is why we kind of have this weird blue foam. But through this experimentation, we found something new and different than what we had before. So now let's test out our other dyes. So first I'm going to show you beets. This is what the beet um, dye looks like. It has nothing in it. This is no alum, no baking soda. This is just beets. And this is what it looks like when you mix the beet dye with alum. And this is when you add baking soda. When you apply these materials wet, they're gonna look a lot different dry. And so when you're making and using your dye, you can use this as paint, you can use this to dye fabric, you can use it to dye yarn and make something with the yarn. But think about the drying time when you're applying it to paper especially because these colors are gonna change and I'm gonna show you that at the end. Here's the same process with the blackberry. This is the plain blackberry first, followed by the dye mixed with alum. And finally, when mixed with baking soda, you can see it's really different than the other colors. And also the texture's a little different, it's a little grainier. So take note of that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat this process with the rest of my dyes. And remember that dyeing is really great because there's a lot of experimentation. You can try soaking something overnight. You can try soaking something for days in cool water. I used hot water because it's faster. But really experiment with the tools that you're using and how you're combining and mixing things. You can also mix the dyes together. Um, Carmen Argote in her video talked a little bit about pH. Now pH is um, a scale used in chemistry that specifies how acidic or basic a water-based solution is. Acidic solutions have a lower pH, while basic solutions have a higher pH. Um, at root temperature, pure water is neither acidic nor basic and has a pH of 7. So if you're experimenting with something that's cooler or hotter, if you're using cooler or hotter water, that's going to change how your color ultimately looks. This is a very process-based project, so while you should be considering and thinking about all these elements as you make choices, 
have also have fun with it and it's okay to make mistakes and to make crazy blue foam and you might actually make something that you didn't even know was possible so be really involved and interested in the process I would say and not as married to the outcomes and you'll really enjoy making your own inks and dyes this is a big reason why I like making my own paints and not going to the store Store-bought paint doesn't have any variation, which can be a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing. Another thing I want to emphasize is that when you're actually laying the ink down, either when you're dyeing a piece of fabric or when you um, are painting with it on paper, it's going to dry different than how it initially um, looks on your paper. So I did a tissue test with the turmeric, um, with it just plain, with it um, with alum, and again with baking soda. And you can see when the tissues are kind of side by side, when they're wet, they kind of look pretty similar. They're not that different. Um, yeah, there's not a huge difference. Like it's a very bright, vibrant yellow, but to distinguish between them, there's, there's not much of a difference. However, once it dried, there was a huge difference. One was almost like a, a, a beautiful blood orange red. So you can see that when something goes from wet to dry, air also affects the pH and you see a color change. So this is the final look of all of our um, colors. So you can see the turmeric as it dried, it kind of affected, and this over time even dried more. And you can see, this is just from one batch of blackberry, but look how when we add different um, mordants, and fixatives how different the color is and there are different types of mordants and fixatives these are non-toxic people use copper which you can get from pennies which is a, um, a little bit more toxic I, I wouldn't recommend it these are very safe but there's so many different things that you can use to actually affect the color you can use vinegar you can use chrome you can use cream of tartar Carmen or Gote use lemon. There's a lot of things you can use that can change and affect your natural dyes and you can almost have infinite variations. Um, and again, this is our first color test. You can see how different it is from the other ones and how, um, again, see how that texture is so different in the one that, that foamed when we added the alum and the baking powder together. How it actually changed the um, texture of the, the work. And then we have our shirt. So I dyed it, um, I let it sit for about two hours and then I completely washed it with soap and water and wrung it out. And I'm gonna let it sit again for another two hours. And um, after that I'm gonna wash it out with soap and water again and see how the color holds. Um, you can also do tie dye, you can do a lot of different things in this stage, play around with the dyeing something. This is the final kind of color right before I stuck it in the dryer. And then it dried and it dried to this like beautiful periwinkle and now I have a brand new shirt that used to be a white shirt and now it's a beautiful kind of lavender periwinkle. And as always, don't forget to clean up your space when you're done. This is really important, it's part of being an artist. Check out William Grantsdell Art Center's social media pages for more projects and art and music that you can do at home. Thank you and have a great rest of your day.